Section 10.7, Kinetic Molecular Theory of Gases. So the kinetic molecular theory is really just talking about why gases behave as they do. So what's going on? What's the theory behind what's going on? Essentially, it is the fact that all the molecules are bumping around. That's essentially the, the underlying statement of the theory. Since they're bumping around, they're bumping around with a certain amount of energy. If you increase the temperature, you're increasing the energy. The higher energy bumps around more frequently. Okay, so if you're thinking of temperature, you're thinking of kinetic energy. So if you increase the temperature, you're increasing the kinetic energy. If you increase the kinetic energy, they're slamming around with more force and they're bopping around more frequently. Now, think about pressure for a second. If pressure is how frequently they slam and with what force they slam, then if you increase the temperature, you're going to increase the energy. If you increase the energy, you're going to increase the pressure. So the underlying, um, the underlying theory underneath all of these Boyle's Law, Charles Law, uh, Guy Lussac's Law, is the fact that, they're, that all of these guys are in motion. Okay. So the first, the first tenet here is that all of these molecules or, or individual atoms are in constant motion and they're slamming into each other and they're slamming into the, the walls of the container. If you think of a gas as filling its container, that means that a tiny bit of gas can be in a tiny container or a tiny bit of gas can be in a huge container. It simply bumps off the walls. And so the bigger the container, the more empty space you're going to have in a gas. The smaller the container, the less empty space. So if you increase the volume of something, you're going to make the, the little molecule have to travel farther and longer before it strikes another molecule or before it strikes the, the container wall. So by increasing the volume, you decrease the pressure. And the molecular theory is saying the reason why the, pr uh, the pressure decreases is that it doesn't strike as frequently because it takes longer for it to get all the way to the surface of the container to hit it. So the actual volume of the molecules is nothing compared to the volume of the container. Most of a gas volume is going to be empty space. Another thing that um, is not intuitive, maybe you wouldn't have guessed it, is there's no attraction. If you have uh, positive gas ions and negative, there's so much space between them that there's very little pull or attraction uh, of attractive or repulsive forces. So you can almost ignore that. Um, you, positives are not going to attract to negatives because you... They're very far away, and remember the attractive force in Coulomb's law uh, has to do with how close they are. So they're very far away, and even if they do come together, they're coming so at such um, speed that they would just bump off of each other anyway. They're not going to actually pull each other in. So it's a negligible attractive forces. So you can almost act like there are no attractive forces. Also, the energy can be transferred. So um, think of them as pool balls. One ball slamming into another pool ball, the energy or momentum of the first is sent into the second. So the first pool ball stops and the second one moves. Or the first pool ball slows down and the second one speeds up. Well, if you think of individual molecules or individual atoms or individual pool balls, some speeds are going up and down. They're varying in speed as they slam into each other. But they're transferring all of their energy. So the average energy is going to be the same. As long as the temperature is the same, the average energy is going to be the same. The scary section in uh, part in this section was the root mean square speed, uh, which is U. And you can see that here. This is the... Um, root mean squared. It's RMS speed. All that means is you're taking the square root of the squares of each of the speeds. Okay, the average. So let's say I have a, um, I've got a molecule going two meters per second and one going three meters per second. How would you take its average speed? Okay, what is the average speed of the molecules in this, in this container if I only have two molecules? 
Well, I average them by adding them together and dividing by the number of molecules I've got. So I've got two molecules. So this is going to be 5 divided by 2, right? Because there's two molecules. 2 plus 3 is 5. So 5 divided by 2, okay, is 2.5 meters per second. The u, which is the root mean square speed, just means that it's going to be the square root of the average, okay, so since I'm dividing by 2, that's the 2 here, 1 half of 2 squared, okay, plus 1 half of 3 squared. So what is 1 half of, of 4? It's 2. What's 1 half of 9? It's 4 and a half. So this is 4 and a half, this is 6 and a half. And I take the square root of 6 and a half. And we get 2.55. Okay, so you can see that the, the average was 2.5, and, a half and the, the root mean square speed was 2.55 meters per second. So very, very close. All you're saying, it's, it's, it's a way of predicting what the average speed is of all the molecules in the, in the stuff. Okay, all the gas molecules in the stuff, that's all it is. So you're not going to have any questions on that. that. I just needed to explain that a little bit. We're also going to see that the average kinetic energy of all the molecules is proportional to the temperature. So if you increase the temperature, you've given each of these molecules more energy, they're going to move faster, and they're going to move with more power. So they're going to punch into the walls faster, increasing the, the pressure, or they're going to um, bump into each other more frequently. So the higher, the higher energy, the more they wiggle. And the more they wiggle, the more they bump. The more they bump, the more they have a pressure. So that's really the gas laws is essentially talking about how much stuff you have, how, how hot it is, so how many times they're bumping, and then what the pressure is against the, the, uh, the chamber walls. So the kinetic energy, kinetic molecular theory, very simple. Um, give, a ki give a third grader some sugar, and he's going to be hyper. As he's hyper, he's going to cause more trouble and bump into more things. That's essentially the kinetic molecular theory. Don't give sugar to a third grader.